Hey friends, how's it going? Just finishing up my work day here in the shop and uh, I want to do a little bit of a personal project. I'm going to start on this 394 XP. Good friend of this channel, TK, sent us this saw and uh, it's been logged with. It's it's dirty and, and well worked. So I figured this is a good candidate to do a bottom end rebuild on. And uh, I'm going to push this thing pretty hard. Uh, I'm going to port the living bejesus out of it. Why? I don't need a ported 394, but I sure want one. I'll probably run a 24 on this and just absolutely murder firewood with it. So, um, you guys know I, I have my, my stock one right here. It's a great saw. I'll never port that saw. This one, this one's not the prettiest 394, so I figure it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good candidate for porting. Okay, I'm just taking the, the flywheel off. I got my two jaw geared puller on it here. In fact, I'm going to loosen this off a bit. It's a little crooked. And uh, I'm just going to put this, this nut down a little bit. You want to leave the nut on the end of the crankshaft when you're doing this, or they will often shatter. Cranks are really hard. They're heat treated. And uh, if you put too much pressure on it, it will shatter. Okay, got this here. come loose no it did not okay put a little more pressure yeah. get me a big hammer probably this one right here okay let's try this again there we go that's how you take a flywheel off if you can get your puller behind it it's just a two jaw harbor freight get this auto gear puller just the job. Let's get this nut off here. Just want to show you guys how to split a crankcase. This is the kind of stuff that frightens a lot of guys. Guys email me, I need bearings. Um, it's not that hard. I'm just gonna grab the bin here. It's not that hard. You just it, it's one of it's an it's a learned it's a learned uh, hobby, you know. And all these little skills. Uh, slowly but surely, you, you, you learn how to do these things. I wasn't born doing this. Here's our intake block. I'm going to use this bag for the remaining bolts. I wasn't born doing this stuff, friends. And uh, if I can share with you how to do this stuff, I'm going to do it every time. Undo this bolt here. For the oil tank. Let's get this flywheel off. Oh yeah, that's a logging saw. Look at the good mung. I'm going to blow this off. We'll take the handle off and the remaining parts and we'll split this thing. Okay, friends, let's get our T-handles out. This one and this one. And let's go to town. Now, I am, <laughs> I am the farthest thing from a 394 Guru. I've owned one for years. I have not spent a lot of time working on it. I've never put a wrench on that 394. Uh, it doesn't come out very often. I, I run it, I run it here and there, but uh, it's it's probably one of my favorite saws. I just absolutely love that saw. It's an absolute monster, and it's not too heavy. I'm just gonna get these bolts undone here. Show you guys kind of how to disassemble this. Take this carb tray off. I want to get going on this project. This will be uh, in and out. Uh, we're going to port this thing really warm. Uh, I ordered a bunch of parts for it this week. When they come in, I'll show you guys. Let's get this out of the way. Choke. Put that in the bag. Tray. Get these bolts off here. Tell me that's not a logging saw. Eh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to blow this all off and we will continue going here. Okay, one thing that's neat about these saws is this is one of the early saws that had spring anti-vibe. It's one of the reasons why they're so nice to run. We're getting dirty here today. It's a dirty work kind of day. Make sure you guys can see this. Take off this bolt. There we go. I'm going to take these limiters off. This one. 
this is going to be a fun build for me. I'd like to pipe this saw and uh, we'll turn it up fairly, fairly warm. Um, I don't need this to be a torque monster. I would like it to be really fast. So a good, a good blend of torque and speed would be nice. Okay, I'll flip this around, take this limiter out, clean this thing up nice. Maybe I can get some new plastic for this. Plastic's kind of beat up. And uh, it does have a full wrap for it, which is cool. This is a 1993 by the looks of it. 394. One of my absolute favorite car saws. I just, I love these things. Okay, there you go. Take that off. Again, fairly, fairly dirty underneath. Okay, give this thing a quick wipe. I gotta take the oil pump off. Just go in here. Get rid of this leaky air hose. There we go. Okay, just wipe this down. I'll give this a good bath. Oh yeah, look at that. That's that's goodness. Guess we'll need the air hose again, won't we? <laughs> okay, we blew all the goodness out of here. I think it's this one. Let's see if we can get this into these bolts. No. You gotta be careful with these sometimes. You can uh, ground them off. Okay, switching gears. There we go. Right tool for the job. Always works. Let's see if we can get this one in here. There we go. That one there. Nice. There we go. Patience is a virtue with these old saws. It's uh, sometimes they haven't been apart ever, and they got lots of time on them. So you just helps to have lots of different tools, lots of different, um, you know, Allen keys and. Hmm. Let's see if we can get this off of here. This thing here, get that off. There we go. Put that in here. Oh, this thing is stuck. There we go. Oh yeah, look at all the crud behind there. Wow. Oh yeah, that's been hot. This thing's cut a board foot or two in it today, I reckon. Might have been a far forestry saw, who knows. But it's definitely, it's definitely seen its fair share of timber, I'll tell you that. Okay, get all this stuff out. We want to get at the, we want to get at the bolt holes that hold this thing together. Okay, well, let's start cracking bolts and, uh, yeah, you wanna. Okay. Let's try. Again, we'll try. There you go. That. See that? Right tool for the job. Those ball and Allen heads are good, but um, if you got crud in the in the head like this does, um, they will strip it real fast. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna get my screwdriver here and <laughs> there's so much crud in here you can barely see. Interesting. Okay, let's try this again. Have a case bolt that's stuck. Let's 
just having a that's having a really hard time centering itself. Okay, here we go. There, beauty. Woohoo! Can you tell I'm happy? Breaking a case bolt or having a stuck case bolt would not be a fun project. I mean, you could get it out, but magnesium is not the most easily drilled substance in the world. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to have a look at these bearings. Um, big saw like this that's got the amount of time on it that this does. Uh, I'm more inclined to just go right through it. You guys can tell by how dirty this thing is. Every bolt hole is just full of mung. I'm more inclined, if I'm going to wring a saw's neck like I'm going to do to this thing, um, I really don't want original bearings in it or questionable bearings. There we go, there's that one. Because you know that's going to be the weak point. It's going to be the bearings every time. Especially if they're original. Okay. And bolt hole here. Most saws typically have four bolts around the crank. And then a couple in the front. Sometimes one in the back. This has the carb tray so it doesn't have that. Wow. I'm just going to blow all these out. Okay, I'm gonna go with the snap-on uh, T-handle. Let's see if we can get it down into here. There we go, nice. Okay, so we got one bolt left and that one, there we go. This is definitely a, oh, uh-oh. This is definitely a logging saw, you can tell. These uh, the Husqvarna's, this vintage, they take a licking and keep on ticking. Oh, get this back in there. There, beauty. Okay, friends, we're getting somewhere here. I ordered bearings and seals and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to do a brand new bottom end and clean this thing up. And... Uh, I think the chain brake's broken if I remember correctly. I'll have to order one of those or look for a new clutch cover on the interwebs. And uh, top cover is a little ratty. I wouldn't mind doing that. I, it would be nice to make this thing presentable. You know, this is my going to town machine. She's all ported. I'll pipe this thing and uh, just have fun with it. This is just going to be a fun build. And. Uh, I've never ported a 394, so why not port this one? Okay. So these have eight case bolts, so I don't even think that is one. So shows you what I know. I know just enough to be dangerous. Jack of all, master of none. That's why I have no problem saying I don't know. Because when you say I don't know, you learn something. Uh, you meet somebody who does know, and then they tell you, and you learn, right? Okay, that should be all of our... Did I get that bolt out of there, friends? This one? I like this thing, it's got some soul. My other one's like brand new, like it's barely even been used. It's definitely, it's definitely a saw that hasn't been run much. Let's see if this comes off, there we go. Let's just take this thing right down to the bare meat and potatoes. Oh wow. This thing is a little smashed, there we go. Oiler. I'll probably leave the oiler in. Okay, wipe this all off. Okay, we got all of our case bolts out. Let's we'll take that off. Again, we'll throw them all in the parts bag. Super important, friends. If you're taking a bunch of saws apart at once, um, Using parts bags will get you out of a lot of trouble. I think that one bolt is still in there. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's put the 
ball end in there and see. Oh, it's loose. It just, uh, it's stuck. There we go. It's not coming out because of all the mung in there. Okay. There. Beauty. Okay. So, this is the point. If you guys are going to be working on power saws, buy one of these. You can either buy an OEM or an aftermarket one. This is an aftermarket one. Um, the, the tip is not very hard. It's mushroomed. I keep saying I'm going to make a new one out of drill rod, but I keep using this thing, so... Okay, I'll show you guys how this works. Slide this over. Hopefully it's wide enough to get around this crankshaft. Sometimes they aren't. And this one will work fine. Now, the big key with these, when you're inserting them, make sure that your case, your, your crank puller is straight up and down and level so that you put all the force straight ahead. Now, if you guys can see, this actually grabs and holds the bearing, okay, from the inside, and then all you do is push the crank through the bearing. This stuff is not that hard. It, it, I mean, it takes practice. Oh, see, this one popped already. Often these are stuck and they don't come apart nice. So this saw wants to cooperate. And you just turn this until, there you go. I right, just push that right off the bearing. Okay. Oh yeah, these bearings are no good. Oh, I thought there was some wear on the crank, but it's just discolored. You guys see that? This is all stuff you want to look at when you're. I'll uh, I'll hit that with some with some emery cloth, and it'll clean up. This crank looks minty, minty. It's not glued. Look at that, friends. That's the dirtiest oil tank I've ever seen. Look at the stuff in there. That's awesome. TK, thank you for setting this saw. This is, this thing's cool. These bearings are clickety clackety. I can feel it. They're not smooth. They're, look, they're getting stuck. So. This thing was due for bearings. Anyways, I'm, I'm really glad that I took it apart. Okay, now the other side. You'll be able to see this side. And uh, now, typically the bearing that's going to wear out is the PTO side, your clutch side, which is right here. And again, it's crunchy crunch, so. Okay, now. We slide this over. Just get it situated here and then I'll show you guys I get asked these kind of questions a lot which is good if you if you don't know it's good to ask right like how do those things work see that it just it just grabs so you guys can see it there on the on the bearing see it's pushing on the bearing now watch it'll just push it right through there Definitely takes some force. Um, this thing's cooperating nicely though, so sometimes they're stuck. If they're if you're applying pressure and it won't budge, take a mallet like this and go. Okay, and it'll push that bearing, it'll get that crank moving usually. If that doesn't work, sometimes you might have to apply heat. Okay, so I'm really glad I took this apart. We have some rust in there, okay. I don't feel that with my finger, so we're gonna call this good. This is just gonna be a play saw. No discoloration on the big end bearing, that's this. No discoloration on the small end bearing, so. I think we have a winner here. And this bearing's smooth as glass, so. I mean, it's not new, but this would be a serviceable bearing. See how I can just spin it with my finger there? Gasket's falling off. I'm going to have to soak this thing in some diesel, I bet, to get this stuff out of here. It's bad. Real bad. Look at this, friends. <laughs> Look at that.
Got a piece of gasket. Look. <laughs> it's amazing that this, what these saws are built to go through. And they're built, these things are built tough. Real tough. So, and again, let's compare it to this side bearing again, just so you guys can see the deal. Okay, look, I can't spin that. I got an oily finger, okay? And again, look at this side. That one's good. This one, not so much. So this thing was more than due for bearings. Okay, I'm gonna rip this gasket off. I don't know if I have a gasket set for this. If I don't, I'll have to order one before we can put this together. I could make a new gasket um, by hand too also. That's always an option. It's nicer to just buy a gasket. And again, look at this. I just swept my floor too, so I knew this one was gonna be real dirty. Look at that. Like molasses in there. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is way too much fun. Well, we successfully made another mess on the old power saw bench. Okay, friends. Well, that's how you split a chainsaw case. And again, these are not expensive. I think, I mean, you can order these online. They're 40 or 50 bucks. They're cheap like borscht. They work fine. The ends are a little soft, but some of that is I can be a hand fist at times, but um, with a case splitter, this is an easy job and this has worked on every power saw that I've ever used it on. So uh, you buy it once and you can do bottom end uh, jobs, no problem. So anyhow friends, we made one heck of a mess here today. I'm gonna have to clean up the bench, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys that. This is the nuts and bolts. If you want to port power saws, you're gonna be doing this stuff all the time. It's a good skill to have. Um, I tend to rebuild bottom ends on every saw that I port just because I tend to only work on vintage saws. Nothing's worse than getting a really good running saw and you pop a bearing on it. Remember the 630 Super Friends right there. Go back in the channel. I ported that, I don't know, three years ago on the channel, two and a half years. Uh, ran that saw for a summer and I popped the bearing. And the reason was I didn't do the bearings on that. I made an educated guess and I ended up having to tear that saw back down. So then were the brakes. I'd rather just go through it and, and make a nice saw on the first go. Yeah, it's a bunch of work to do this, but look at that. Look at all that good mung we're gonna get out of there. Um, we're gonna clean this up and this is gonna be a nice saw when it's done, so. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching, take her easy. So glad you guys could come and hang out today. Later. <laughs>